Welcome to EB-5 Investment Voice, where attorney insights intersects with immigration investments. If you are a foreign investor, domestic fund manager, or enterprising entrepreneur and want to get the most out of the EB-5 program, you have come to the right place. I'm Mark Deal, and I'll be your co-host on this journey. I'm joined by your host, Mona Shaw, and other attorneys at Mona Shaw & Associates, as well as immigration leaders from around the world. So let's get into EB-5 Investment Voice. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mona. You know, not so long ago, I saw a headline. I believe it was on Christian's website, the IMI Daily, something in the nature of Greece was going to dethrone EB-5 as the world's biggest golden visa by year end. I remember Rebecca and I both going, what? It's a bold no claim. way. <laughs> <laughs> no way can EB-5 be dethroned by what is a tiny little island in the middle of the Mediterranean with a population of what, 11 million, um, which is what, 3% of the US. But that particular year, interestingly enough, Greece saw almost the same amount of main applicants as the United States did. Well. So yeah. <laughs> so it's worth talking about. Right. Well, that was for their CBI program. What has also been happening, and this is something we've noted really since COVID, Mark, that we have had people calling us and us talking to us and, and really saying, can we just buy some investment property out there in the Mediterranean? Um, is that possible? I'm not sure whether I want to do the RBI. Maybe if I like the property, then I will go back. I thought it would be a good idea as a lot of people in the United States are not too familiar with the program, to really focus today on not only the real estate and property in Greece being worth the investment, but also touching on their uh, RBI program too. Someone I wanted to ask real quick, because I'm a little confused, is uh, the golden visa and the citizenship by investment and the and the RBI investments, are are those all the same? Are they different? I know. All are we these talking ac- about different things? All yeah. these acronyms, it, it, it does become difficult. I mean, EB-5 is easy for you. <laughs> well, but, well, eight years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but EB-5 is a residency by investment, which is the same as a golden visa. And a CBI is citizenship by investment. There aren't too many countries which offer the citizenship directly. Most countries do offer residency first. And then after you've been resident for a few years, then you apply for citizenship. I see. I see. And as I just said, Greece is one of the countries which has really rocketed to the top. And of course, we have a special guest to help us explore the real estate opportunities happening right now in Greece and all the various uh, citizenship and residency programs that they have. Yanis is the CEO and founder of Velmen and has two decades of experience in the real estate market of Cyprus and Greece, guiding international investors and other high net worth individuals through opportunities linked to citizenship via the Cyprus Investment Program or Greece's Golden Visa Program, which makes him the perfect guest for today's topic. Yanos, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Yanos, it's a pleasure to have you here. There aren't too many people who really understand not only the Greek um, RBI program, the uh, the Golden Visa Program, but also uh, a lot about the real estate property in Greece, all around Greece, Greece and the mainland Greece and the islands. Yeah, it's true that uh, Greece... I will say that was not so popular in the past for real estate investment. I will say the last decade, but uh, is things are changing, as you know. Right. Well, in my research, I have come across a number of factors, Yanos, and that I would like to discuss with you, which really does seem to make purchasing property in Greece a worthwhile investment. In fact, I was actually sort of gobsmacked when I saw that The Economist in 2022 stated that uh, the Greek economy outperformed some of the other economic superpowers, including Japan, Germany, and China. Indeed, the last few years, uh, Greece is doing great, not just in real estate, but in every sector. And it attracts, I will say, lots of uh, big investment companies but also uh, high-tech companies, especially from the U.S. Interesting. Well, I do know that from, what, 2007 to 2019, tourism doubled. During COVID, I think Greece was one of the only countries which was really open to any of the tourists. Yeah, I mean, uh, starting from uh, 11 million, I would say it even tripled. It's now over 33 million 
tourists visiting uh, Greece every year. Well, that's certainly something that would definitely help the economy. But let's just talk about the real estate for a moment. It is true that your Greek government is promoting real estate. I do believe that there was a recent property tax cut of about 13%. There was a uh... The property tax has uh, gone down at about 10 to 13 percent. But it's not just that. As you know, the Greek government has eliminated the 24 percent VAT value added tax. I was the... going to come to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Up until the early 25, there will be no VAT added onto the property price. So this is just a freeze, a temporary freeze, right? It's not a permanent one. Yes, but which could uh, possibly be extended. But right now, that's what we have in front of us. How much value is that? From my understanding, and please correct me uh, if I'm wrong, that not only does the VAT issue, but most of the 13% property tax cut, it really didn't affect the bigger ended, the higher ended properties. It was more effective for the middle to lower end. Yes, in terms of the property tax, it's been done to help the uh, working class, I would say. But the value added tax is covering all property prices. Something else, though, that I would like to bring up in terms of why Greece is a good real estate investment and why government does promote real estate in Greece, it's because under recent studies of the Greek Central Bank, the Greek, I mean, Greece is 212,000 houses shortage. So there is a shortage of over 200,000 houses. So easily we can understand that the demand exceeds supply. That's a very good point. In fact, I think the Economist article, the same one which stated how it was one of the best of better powers in 2022, also stated that it's the second most affordable in Europe after Latvia and the eighth most affordable in the world, Greek property that is. Yes. People can get good investments at good prices, at good price per square meter, ocean view properties, much better than many other capitals. So I'm just going to jump to the RBI program for a second and then bring you back here, uh, Janos. So the RBI program for Greece is much less than many of the other countries at the availability of a five-year residency after investing only 250000 in real estate. Is that because for 250000 you can buy decent real estate? You know, how much real estate can you buy for two hundred and fifty? Of course, it all depends on the location. It can be literally from a, a studio to a three-bedroom property, to, to a three-bedroom house, depending on the location and uh, the area that the property is. But yes... You, I will say as a rule of thumb, for a 250000 someone can buy a very good location, two-bedroom, spacious apartment. Wow. I think in New York, Mark, we can't even buy a parking space for 500000 let alone 250000 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. For Janos, though, I do know that there is a huge difference in um, where the location is. So if, for example, you're purchasing in the middle of Athens, you're much likelier to expend a lot more money than perhaps in, on one of the islands. It depends, uh, really. Uh, you know, when we say center of Athens, it could be, you know, the center of Athens is quite big and there are Good, I mean, great neighborhoods, and there are neighborhoods that are not so popular. If the question is uh, where will be the most expensive real estate within Greece, it could be the South Riviera, Athens Riviera, which is the Glyphada and we have many. I like Those, the word Riviera. Yeah, I picture yeah. blue seas and margaritas by the beach. Yeah, that will be the uh, most expensive per square meter. And of course, will be the, those popular islands like Mykonos, Santorini. But there are 
believe it or not, there's so many great places that uh, people can invest with the much less price per square meter than uh, the ones you get on the South Riviera or Mykonos or and Santorini. So if somebody wanted to just purchase property in Greece and, and maybe not go for their RBI program, will they get a return? Does property retain its value? Absolutely, yes. There is a good return on investment. If we are looking into the investment point of view of uh, just pure investment, real estate investment, yes, there is good return, and that good return could be above 6%, always depending on the price of the property they bought and the location and the use of the property. But yes, the returns would be above 6%. That is good. I did also read, Janos, that the rental tax for property owners is very high. So you may not have the property taxes and the VAT is frozen for the next couple of years, but anyone purchasing property and wanting to rent it is going to feel the pinch. I will say that will be one of the so-called disadvantages that the rental tax starts literally from 0 to 10,000 at 12% and then jumps to 35. Yes, that will be um, a downside on the investment, I would say, but it is what it is. And the government is looking at uh, those matters more carefully. So probably we could see a reduction in the future. But right now you're correct. That's one of the so-called disadvantages. Right. And as we always on this show, we always like to say it as it is. The other disadvantages of Greece are that uh, not only is the rental tax high, but government debt is very high also. Yeah, the government debt started to be very high, but the, you know, the current government, which is the, uh, I mean, is going through the second term of four years is doing great and they are great in the investment side and and creating jobs and opportunities in Greece. I think and we all witness that uh, that government debt in inverted commas is getting much better than any other countries. Mm. I also noticed that unemployment is still high. It became it was at an all time high around about the early part of the two thousands. Then it was brought down a little bit, but it's still high in comparison to other European countries. You know what's the thing really being in Greece? Um, I think we witness probably the opposite today. What I mean is unemployment, yes, was really high if we look at it between 2013 to 2017, 18. But really right now, Actually, the problem is finding staff in Greece and finding people to get works done. So unemployment, yes, was high. That's why many people went abroad. But probably that's why today there is shortage of uh, good, uh, good staff. So let me ask you another question, Janos. Should a person buy and still recover their investment in Greece? You, you're saying they will. Would you recommend going in the center of Athens, even though there are going to be employment issues, more tax issues because of the rental tax? Or would you recommend that somebody who wants to purchase property just, just stick to the islands? Uh, Mona, it all depends. The buyer, the property buyer, if he's an emotional buyer or he's an investor, because as you know, Greece is a very popular destination and right. it's, I will say, a love country. So if someone is buying because he's in love with Crete or he's going to buy in Crete, irrespective, he's buying because he's in love with Santorini, he will buy in Santorini nevertheless, no matter what happens. Now, if you are an investor, I will tell you my point of view as a property investor and as a person that worked closely the last two decades with in, uh, investors, property investors. I will say that buying a property in Greece is wise to buy a property that is not far, I will say not more than an hour drive from the main airport. 
Why is that? Because somebody flying from the U.S. over 10 hours to get to Greece, I think he wants to get to his home in less than an hour because he had a long flight. And other than Athens Airport and Thessaloniki Airport, the rest of the airports, I would say they're seasonal. So that's one of the factors I would say people are, and it is like that, that people are focusing around Athens or in Athens. And don't forget something, out of of 11 million of Greeks living in Greece, about half or nearly half are in Athens or Athens suburbs. So that's a great populated area. There is no mistake investing in islands, but what the investor or what the buyer would consider is the islands of Greece, I will say most of them, not all of them, with the exception of Greece, uh, and so with the exception of Crete and a few more islands, they are seasonal. So if the target is by to rent, then we should consider that this rent should be a short-term rent. And that's yeah, going to be makes sense. during the season, where if you buy something around where the locals are living, which is mm-hmm. the suburbs of Athens, Athens city center, Athens, uh, greater Athens, Attiki, I would say, or Thessalonica and, and the surroundings, then for sure, you have a more local population. And since what I mentioned before, there is shortage of over 200,000 houses, then for sure you're going to have a tenant that wants to live in your property all year round. So it all depends what the target market is. Mm, Good advice. All right, so let's move over to the Golden Visa or uh, Greece's RBI program. And of course, What is one of the most biggest attractions behind moving to Greece is primarily the tax benefits. I understand that uh, Greece offers two particularly attractive tax regimes, your non-DOM regime and something for retirees. Yes, there are attractive regimes for the retirees, especially if there is a double uh, tax treaty. Also, I will add on to what you're saying for nomads, people that wants to work remotely through Greece. And also there is uh, this um, fixed wealth taxation of 100,000 euro, irrespective of how much money anyone is making on global income. So if someone's income is above 2 million, then he's basically... Uh, much more favorable to be in Greece because with a hundred thousand you can get, I will say, in inverted commas, away legally with just a hundred thousand. And please note that this will be valid for seventeen years. And for this, also, they don't really need to be in the country uh, living. So basically, they could be traveling around but still be tax residents of Greece. Right. I, I didn't realize that. There is no need to live in Greece for even a day, right? Yes, but allow me to separate the two subjects. Of course. If we're referring to the tax residency, yes, they will pay 100000 per year. And the Greek government doesn't really need them to stay in Greece unless, I mean, as long as they pay their taxation. Now, for the residency by investment, which is the program uh, which is very well known as uh, the Golden Visa. This has nothing to do with the taxation, has nothing to do with the tax residency. It is a permanent residency for someone who wants to be in Europe, in the Schengen zone, by buy property in Greece. And this, yes, indeed, as you're saying, They can, uh, I mean, they can maintain that without living a day in Greece. Wow. And you have a very fast turnaround. Uh, Is it still as fast as three months? Yes, I will say from the moment that the client has uh, proceeded with all his documentation, bought his property, and and, uh, he applied and submitted his uh, biometrics. Yes, still today, 
they can get the residency within 60 days, maximum 90 days. Well, that's unheard of in many of the other countries, especially here in the U.S. Uh, how long is the residency, Janos? How many years does an investor have to be a resident of Greece before they can file for citizenship? The, first of all, allow me to say that the residency is permanent and it's renewed every five years. They can apply for their citizenship if they live in the country for the number of seven years. I see. So do they have to actually live in Greece for seven years to become a citizen or can they still maintain it through just having residency for seven years? I will say that's a gray area at this moment. There are voices that say having the residency, there are voices that say you need to live there. So actually, we have not witnessed that yet, to be clear, clear. But I would consider the Greek uh, Golden Visa program as a residency program rather than a citizenship program. But as a resident, though, how are you given uh, access to some of the other countries in Europe? Uh, because uh, Greece is part of the Schengen zone. As you know, there are no borders between this Schengen zone countries. So someone holding a Greek residency, he can easily freely travel, for example, to Switzerland or uh, so France or any other Schengen zone country yeah, without any visa. What about for the United Kingdom? You have to have a visa now? Uh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the Brexit story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, in fact, there was an article recently about all the workers which are displaced now because of Brexit, where they could just walk across the border and get an employment, including in Greece, which is a popular holiday destination area. They can't do that anymore. You know, something else that I would like to bring up, since we are discussing about uh, the popularity and, and the Greek uh, residency by investment, is that the, recently the government, probably yesterday, I think, or the day before, they have passed a new legislation where the threshold is increasing from 250 to 400 to 800, between 400, and depending on the location, to 800. Thousand euro, and this will be effective starting and uh, finishing 30th of September. 30th of September of this year? Yes, from today until the 30th of September. Anyone who wants to buy a property in Greece and get a residency for 250, he should act as soon as possible to get this done. You know, Yanis, in the United States, if you want to do use the uh, go for the RBI or the Golden Visa, you have to invest in a project and create jobs. Now, for your Golden Visa in Greece, you just invest in a real estate property. Do you have to do anything? And I do notice that you have uh, you're particularly good with distressed property. Is there an element of having to deal with distressed property for the uh, Golden Visa? If you remember that Golden Visa started in 2013 and the purpose of the Golden Visa, it was because if we go back to 2012, there was a major crisis yes. in Greece. And I would say every single, almost every single property was distressed in Greece because people didn't pay their loans and the banks were repossessing and, you know, it was a like a panic attack, I would say, during those years. And then we see the, um, the uh, RBI coming in and slowly, slowly, those, uh, I mean, there were a number of investors. I remember one of my clients uh, in 2013, he, he was a total an investor not connected to RBI. He bought around 25 buildings. Of course, much lower than what it is today. So, yes, still today, you could find people are um, that would like to sell their properties. But I will say, after a decade, things have changed. Uh, but the program itself, it's not connected to distressed assets. The program itself is connected to 
properties, generally properties, residential or commercial. The only thing that you cannot buy and qualify for residency is agricultural land. You can qualify by buying building land, commercial land, uh, residential properties, but not really agricultural land. Now, if we are referring to Piquet investors, organizations, funds, yes, of course, there are still in funds or under the ownership of banks, uh, lots of distressed assets, I would say repossessions, still there are. In the open market, I would say, they're, they're getting less and less because the values are going up. And as we discussed before, if we have a shortage of 200,000 homes, it, and it means that uh, properties, uh, prices of properties are going up day by day. You know, if we look at the last uh, statistics of the Greek Central Bank, we'll see that it was a double-digit increase in the property prices. You know, that is so encouraging, Yanos. I believe it was Price Waterhouse, which stated that in 2022, Athens was one of the most promising property market in all of Europe. So that is, it's a real turnaround in the last 10 years, Mark. It definitely, since the low point uh, when Greece had those financial troubles in, in 2012, and through programs like this, where people can uh, can essentially invest in, in Greece and get those benefits, as well as you know, the nation of Greece get those investment benefits as well. Uh, Janos, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mona. Thank you for being with us today on EB5 Investment Voice. The topics presented in this podcast is informational in nature and is not to be taken as specific legal advice. If you have questions on the topics presented in this episode or other investment immigration needs, please contact Mona Shaw and Associates. Mona and her attorney staff can be reached at mshawlaw.com. That's M-S-H-A-H law.com. Make sure you don't miss our next episode focusing on a different aspect of the EB-5 program by subscribing to the podcast. While you're at it, leave us a rating on iTunes. If you really found this episode valuable, share it with someone else that could benefit from this information. Until then, I'll see you on the next episode of EB-5 Investment Voice.